Okay. Magandang magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1. Today at uh, today is July 13, Monday. Hello everyone and welcome to Season 2 of O Talakayan, the POT's online interview program where we tackle different topics and issues in occupational therapy practice and education. Hi, Kim! Hi, Lee! How are How you are so you? far? I, I'm May good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Kamusta ka? Okay naman. Um, this past weeks, um, we're into training mm-hmm. because the academic year is about to start. So, you're a faculty member too. So, you do know that we will be delivering instruction now in another platform. So, yes. OT teachers would need to learn those mm-hmm. techniques. And then every Saturday, I'm doing telehealth. Oh, that's yeah. nice. So, ako, si- similar, no? Parang preparations for the first semester were in full swing. Talagang naghahanda na para sa opening ng classes yeah. in August. And I'm sure yung ating mga viewers ngayon, I you know most of our viewers are clinicians, are also doing telehealth already. I, I hope you learned so many things in our season one. No? Kim, nakaisang season na tayo. Grabe. At 14 episodes na rin pala yun. So, and dami. Mm-hmm. We have covered many practice areas, practice mm-hmm. settings yeah. when it comes to telehealth. And I we do hope um, that the OTs learn something from it and are already um, implementing those, trying to contextualize those to their own facilities. Now, mm-hmm. for season two, in connection with the relaxing of community quarantine guidelines, we will now be moving towards in-person therapy services. And I do know many clinicians, many OTs would have those fears, apprehensions, right? Um, as to how to go about doing in-person therapy services. That's why we'll be having this season for that. Our focus would be how to go about providing in-person therapy services. But at the same time, if telehealth would be applicable, mm, do those two modes of service delivery simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Naman. So for this episode, Bali, what will be our topic and who will be our esteemed resource person? Ayan. So ipakalala na natin. Ang una, <laughs> ang unang-una sa ating season two ay walang iba kundi si Tanya Garcia. And we call her Tanya. Okay, so Tanya... Um, graduated from the University of Santo Tomas in 2014. And, and she has been working at the UP Philippine General Hospital Department of Rehabilitation Medicine for six years. Ang bilis ng panahon. No? Six years na. Ipag sabihin, Kim, ang tanda na natin. <laughs> Oo nga. <laughs> Ta- Tanya is actually the co-chair of the Committee on Membership and Nominations of the PAOT. And Tanya does a lot of work here. No? She helps our committee chair, Jeff, in processing membership, answering queries on membership. Ayan. So yung mga nanonood sa atin na hindi pa members, baka gusto nyong magpa-member na, no? help the, the association. Tanya is also currently taking her master's in occupational health at the UP Manila College of Public Health. So hi, Tanya! Hi, Sir Lee. Hi, Lee and hi, hi Kim. Ta- <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> yeah, thank you also for inviting me. Ikaw ba nasa Manila Manila ka ba nasa ngayon? Nasa Manila ka I'm actually in Las Piñas, sa bahay ko. Okay, yeah. I see. All right. Okay. okay, maybe we could start with... Um, Tanya is one of those um officers naman who helped create the guidelines when it comes to um therapy provision. And... We have specifically rated there to assign probably a safety officer in any hospital or in any facility. And I think you have assumed that role too, right, Tanya? So yeah, can yes. you give our viewers an overview of your task, of your responsibilities, and why is it needed for a certain facility or institution to have a safety officer? Okay, so I, I think I can share now already my PowerPoint, right? Okay. Here it is. Uh, inside your app. Wait for a while. Okay. 
hombre. Ayan. Sorry for the lag. <laughs> Ayan. Hi. Uh, good evening again to our viewers. Ayan. So, I'll be talking about uh, safety and the PPE. And most especially, try to talk about also the hierarchy of control. And of course, the do's and don'ts when it comes to PPE usage. Okay. So, the first question was, uh, yes, I became a safety officer in PGH. We, uh, actually, part kami ng group of safety officers uh, na itinalaga sa PGH during the first few months of um, PGH uh, accepting COVID-positive patients. So, basically, our role is to uh, monitor, is to assist, and also to uh, guide the healthcare workers in terms of donning and doffing. And sometimes, uh, people also approach the safety officer in terms of kung ano ba dapat yung isusuot nila. Kasi, uh, as you know, in when you work in a hospital, the PPE that you're going to use also depends on certain factors or certain criteria. So, yun. And also, trabaho din ng safety officer would be to impart or to teach also dun sa healthcare worker kung ano ba yung mga dapat. Kasi in the hopes that we'll be able to produce or we'll be able to make a healthcare worker sustainable in terms of donning and docking PPE. Yan. So important din na sana kung kakayanin, may safety officer in the clinic, lalo kung magkakaroon ng face-to-face, um, face-to-face already. Because this this safety officer would oversee na, uy, ito yung co-worker ko na, teka, hindi ka nag, nag-hand wash. Teka, bakit? Um, bakit hindi ka nagpalit from, from your work clothes to going home clothes and, so, and all sorts. Pero kung hindi naman kakayanin, the best advice that I could give is that all the workers in a particular clinic must be aware kung ano ba talaga dapat yung mga safety tips or ano yung mga dapat nilang gawin as a safety officer themselves. Kasi tulungan na lang. I mean, ano, uh, Parang you, all, you guide also other clinicians or guide also co-workers. Okay? Yeah. Ayan. Maybe um, just to follow up, so, um, most of our viewers kasi would be working in the clinics, right? Particularly in the pediatric um, setting. So can you enumerate tasks? Kaya if ever there will be a safety officer in a certain clinic or facility, what could be those tasks? That would okay. be expected of him or her. Kahit ano lang, mag-enumerate lang siguro tayo ng... Siguro w- one thing that I would... Uh, siguro one, would, one thing that would be better would be to monitor. Again, number one yung monitoring. Kasi monitor in terms of ano yung supply, ano yung suot, no, ano yung kailangan PPE, ano yung dapat meron sa clinic, as well as reporting na din. So, for example... Um, yung, for example, kulang na sa ganitong PP, kailangan i-report din niya dun sa clinic owner or sa kung sino man yung assigned to replenish, if ever. And also, trabaho din ng safety officer, again, to educate, most especially, um, to educate kung bakit ginagawa to, kung bakit siya kailangan isuot, kung bakit uh, kailangan laging tandaan no worker or yung co-worker niya na ito yung dapat niyang gawin. So again, monitor, report, tapos educate. Yun yung mga, isa sa mga important na sana uh, maging role ng isang safety officer sa isang clinic if ever. Thank okay, thank you, Tanya. So we're noting that monitor, report, and educate. No, three very, very important functions. And so actually, before I ask my next question, I forgot, nasa YouTube na nga pala tayo. No? Yeah. And nasa YouTube tayo at wala ang audience natin sa Zoom. So, um, sa mga nanonood sa atin tonight, no, if you have comments or questions, please type them below. And so please type them below. And total na dito na rin naman kayo please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Okay, so let's get back. Tanya, can you perhaps orient us once again, or and the viewers of course, about uh, the hierarchy of infection control? Because it will really influence the facility guidelines and policies and even the overall physical arrangement of a facility. 
Okay. I again, uh, Lee and Kim, before I for before I proceed to that question, I would like to remind also the viewers that aside the safety officer has a lot of roles. So yung sinabi ko lang kanina, just kung bago marami 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 kasi yung pwedeng maging role sa safety officer. Yun lang yung kung feeling ko na visible. Pero uh, marami ng ginagawa ng isang safety officer. Isa na jan yung hazard identification, yeah, risk assessment, and management intervention. Tapos isa na dyan would be, yun nga, to plan out kung ano yung mga pwedeng gawin using the hierarchy of control as mentioned by Sir Lee. So, the hierarchy of control, and before that, let me define, kasi ito, imi-mention ko rin later, what is a personal protective equipment or a PPE. Well, we all know that this is a specialized clothing or equipment worn by an employee for protection against infection, ma infectious materials. So, later, I will be discussing kung ano yung kung paano yung pagdadon, paano yung pagdadoff, and also kung ano yung mga dapat uh, natin gawin, uh, ano yung mga di dapat gawin. Okay. Ayan. So, ito yung hierarchy of control. Yes. It's, uh, if you have encountered this, um, yan, ginagamit siya to control and prevent hazards. So, it's, gamitin siya sa occupational health and safety. Ayan. So, kung makita nyo, let's go to the picture, it's an inverted pyramid wherein yung topmost considered the most effective and the, the, the bottom part would be the least effective. I'm not saying na least effective siya, pero kasi meron kasi ibig sabihin niya, which later I would tap into. So for the first uh, first thing, the hierarchy of control is intended to control and prevent the hazards again. And it's arranged from most effective and least effective. And we all know that the hazard is something that has the potential to cause harm. So in this pandemic, um, the hazard na identified, with, which is a biological hazard, and it's the virus. So it's a COVID-19 virus or the SARS-CoV-2. Okay, going to the first uh, hierarchy of control, okay, would be the elimination. So basically, elimination siya yung pinaka most effective, kaya siya yung nasa pinaka taas. It means to physically remove the hazard. So it's the first and most effective control. However, in this current pandemic, the most effective thing for you to eliminate is through a vaccine, which wala pa. Okay? So wala pa tayong vaccine. So you go now to the second hierarchy, yeah, which is the substitution. So Substitution would mean uh, replace a given hazard with something less hazardous, uh, substitute the process or the method. So technically, this hierarchy control is used in the industrial setting uh, versus the um, less most sa healthcare. Pero may application din siya on some point. So for the substitution, um, for we don't want to substitute the virus. Rather, yung terminology would be to use a drug to para pahinain or to weaken the effects of the virus. But again, yeah, wala, wala pang drug to, to target the virus. Okay? So we discussed the first two hierarchy of control, which is the elimination and substitution. We now go to the third part of the pyramid. Ayan, which is the engineering control. So this engineering control is, I think, one of the most things that we could do during this pandemic. So again, the first two, elimination and substitution, hindi siya ganun ka feasible. Hindi siya feasible kasi yun nga, number one, walang vaccine. Number two, there's still no drug proven. Then this third one is the engineering control. Okay, so... This uh, engineering control means to isolate people from the hazard. So isolating people from the hazard or pro uh, basically guarding. I think ginagawa na to ng mga clinic owners or the clinics in the clinics, yan, such as the glass transaction window, ventilation, area mapping, tapos uh, the one-way flow of entry and exit points foot-powered alcohol stations, donning and doffing areas, and others. So basically, when you talk about engineering control, you basically modify the physical uh, a physical aspect of the workplace. Okay? Kasi in the hopes that you would isolate the worker from the hazard, which is, for example, uh, yung glass transaction window, ang purpose niyan is to, you know, uh, bawasan yung physical contact. Kasi, we all know that the transmission of the virus is through aerosol-producing 
uh, procedures, yan, yan, gas transaction windows, you make use of, or you uh, create a one-way traffic, yan, instead of using two doors, gagamit ka ng para ito yung exit, ito yung entrance, and also ventilation, yan, isa yan sa pinaka-important that the clinic owners must consider ventilation because there are studies that suggest uh, enclosed spaces using uh, yung paikot-ikot na airflow inside could possibly be a source of transmission for COVID-19 virus. Yeah, so if you have natural ventilation in your settings, natural ventilation I mean would be windows, try to open it uh, every once in a while and just to have the airflow. Although I'm not an engineer, it's I think this is the best time to consult engineers for the ventilation matter. Yun, para, alam mo yun, may continuous flow of air inside the workplace. Yan. And also, one engineering control will be establishing hand-washing areas. Yan, hand-washing areas. Kung before sa clinic, ang hand-washing area lang ay nasa CR, which is, again, magpapasok, papaloob yung mga pasyente. So, dapat hindi. So, dapat sa start pa lang ng pagpasok nila sa clinic vicinity, may hand washing area na para dun pa lang naghugas sila ng kamay before going inside. So, that's one engineering control. And then also, exhaust fans. So, one example would be putting up exhaust fans, um, lalo kung yung ventilation would be a, a matter or a concern. Yeah, so technically, again, repeating, engineering control is basically modifying the physical setup to for to isolate and to guard the workers from the hazard na identified. Yeah. It can be costly. Yeah. Again, when you try to implement something, medyo costly siya kasi talagang magkakaroon ka ng changes. Eh. Yeah. Okay. For the next hierarchy of control, this is the administrative controls. Yeah. So... We talked about already elimination, substitution, engineering control, and the administrative control. Okay? So for... Sorry. Wait lang. Nag-move siya. Ayan. For the administrative control, these are changes in the policy procedures to change the way people work or act. Uh, this could be in form of posters, limiting the size of people inside the designated area, orientation, webinars, and others. So for this particular control, compliance is very challenging because unlike with the engineering control, what you are changing is the physical setup. With the administrative control, you're changing the mindset of people or the behavior. You're targeting to have a change in the behavior of the personnel, if ever. But the implementation is more quick than the rest of controls mentioned. Again, so... One example of the administrative control so would be the posters that you could see. Proper hand washing technique. You uh, cover your mouth whenever you cough or sneeze. Always wear a mask. You, you basically put up posters or sometimes you do webinars to your co-workers. One of the best practice when it comes to um, safety protocols. Yeah, and pwede rin naman, um, pwede rin naman Yung one example also would be changing the work schedule. So, kung dati, yung limang therapists mo pasok sila sa clinic, ngayon, magkakaroon ng work rotation. So, AM si yung dalawang therapist. So, PM yung tatlong therapist. Kasi, ang goal mo nga doon is to limit the person inside or limit the population or crowd control inside the facility. Yan. Kasi, again, during this pandemic, we're also strictly practicing physical distancing. Yan. Okay. So, another one would be... Yeah. So, let me show you um, some of the examples that we use in the workplace. Yeah. So, if you've been to the hospital, you would see this um, posters or signages around. Because you have to offer constant reminder also to the workers and... Ayan, sorry, sorry, no live video. You have to have a constant reminder to the workers in the area. Yeah, kasi hindi naman pwede palagi kang nandon sa tabi ng worker na ilay remind mo sila. So you have to set that up. Pero madami pang administrative controls that you can actually enforce. So just that's just to name a few. Okay, and 
Ayan. And for the last part of the hierarchy of control is the PPE. So basically, it's for the worker protection. Uh, it creates the barrier between the worker itself and the hazard. And it's the least effective control. So, pero ito yung pinaka-implemented quickly if it's readily available. And mind you, um, to wear a PPE, a training on proper use and limitation is a must. Kasi sometimes when you go directly on the PPE aspect, on the hierarchy of control, not minding the elimination, substitution, engineering, and administrative controls, the PPE could not be effective then. So maganda if you are a clinician um, or if you own the clinic, you can use this hierarchy of control to plan out you set up no clinic ninyo. So again, uh, since yun nga na-discuss ko, elimination and substitution definitely it's not something possible kasi kung gusto talaga ma-eliminate, you won't you won't open the clinic kasi para wala talagang pumasok pero hindi naman pwede. Diba? You start with the engineering control. Yeah. Engineering control, yung mga binanggit ko, then you go next to the administrative control, then the PPE. So, maganda na i-consider to para makita mo talaga na, ay, oo, oh, oh, ito pala yung dapat kong gawin. Okay, ito yung mga dapat ibaguhin. Ito yung mga dapat um, ituro sa mga uh, therapists in the clinic. Okay, some takeaway points to the hierarchy. Um, it's critical to assess every possible option in the hierarchy. So, yung pinakita ko na inverted pyramid, ano siya, um, outgoing reassessment siya. It's ever-changing, but it's not interchangeable. Again, reminder, you cannot start on the PPE part if you didn't go over to the high, uh, kumbaga yung sa hierarchy ng control. Kaya siya hierarchy kasi may pagkakasunod-sunod siya. You can start first in the engineering control. Diba? Not unless yun yung pinaka most available, which I have said a while ago. You can start with administrative control, thus you will jump to engineering control, just to the PPE. No, it's a hierarchy. You should follow it. Okay? And again, to Paul ulit, evaluation and monitor of the situation and area is a must. Then you apply the hierarchy and control. What I mean by this statement, you have to be aware sa community regarding the transmission, Diba? Sa, for example, in your area, yung cases mataas pa din. Diba? So you have to evaluate and monitor that. Yun. Kasi that would play a factor in terms of your planning pagdating sa physical setup. And, um, well, setup if you do face-to-face -face, um, therapy sessions already or if you open the clinic. Okay. So basically, okay. tapos na yung sa hierarchy of control. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, no, it was good that you have recap and review mm -hmm. that um hierarchy so that um we could have a certain rational why are we doing things right? Yeah. Um, in the guidelines, naman um those yeah. administrative, engineering, and PPE were included, but yes. it was good that it was reiterated once again. And I believe some clinic owners are already doing those. Particularly actually, for the engineering. Yeah. Actually, ano, I'd like to comment po yung iba. Kasi di ba I see clinic owners posting. Natuwa ako na a lot of them already did some engineering controls. And yun. Nakakatuwa na talagang from the physical setup, uh, they were able to change it already. Yeah. And so, I hope na there, there, sh there should also be evaluation and monitor of the situation happening. Um, yung nangyayari din given the changes na ginawa dun sa area. And even for the administrative control, right? Um, yeah. They're giving out all of those guidelines, mm -hmm. relaying it to all the stakeholders. So yeah. it would really entail a lot of planning. You can just open yeah. and yeah. then provide in-person therapy services just like that. I mean, just imagine the risk that yeah. would be exposed to all of the stakeholders Correct. if Correct. it wouldn't be carefully planned. Right. Yeah. Oh, Saka, Actually, po, Tanya, ano, nung pinakita mo sa amin yung the inverted pyramid, doon ko talaga na-appreciate kasi kanina inisip ko, bakit nga ang PPE parang least effective? Whereas, people think Pero, nowadays na, di ba, parang I should have PPE before yeah. I conduct therapy. Pero yun pala, nasa least effective pa yun, no? There are higher, parang uh, there are, are more steps that you can do to 
na, na parang mas effective siya than just yeah. having PPE. Yes, sir. Tapos, yun nga po, uh, nakakatuwa din na, yun nga, part din kasi siya ng guidelines, you know, nag- mm-hmm. na ginawa ng PAOT, yan, na-consider yung mga specific in uh, in clinic um, protocols, yung mga ganyan. Tapos, uh, to also take note, uh, this hierarchy of control does not, is not only limited to clinics. I mean, di siya limited sa clinics. You can use this also in your respective homes, di ba? So, ngayon, uwi ka sa condo, uwi ka sa bahay. Ano kaya yung mga pwedeng physical setup na pwede mong baguhin? So, instead of, um, for example, pasok ka sa bahay, and inst- kung possible, na meron ka, magkaroon ka ng hand washing station, dun pa lang sa labas ng bahay, eh, maggumawa ka na or any measure para makapaghugas ka ng kamay before you open the door. Di ba? Tapos, kung dati yung sapatos, iniiwan mo sa loob ng kwarto or sa loob ng bahay, dun pala sa labas, bago pumasok sa pinto ng bahay, magkakaroon ka na ng, magtatayo ka na ng parang shoe, shoe station, dun iiwan yung sapatos, tas iba. Yun. Parami din. Sa administrative ko ito, pwede apply sa bahay. Like, for example, educate nyo yung mga housemates, <laughs> housemates nyo, yung mga families, as to ano ba yung mga dapat gawin. Yan. Kasi, well, it is, this is the new normal already. We can You know, we can deny the fact. And, and we have to be um, on, parang on the on lookout to each other. Kasi, again, yung kalaban natin, virus siya. So, hindi siya nakikita. Yun. So, kung ano, man, kung ano yung kaya natin gawin to prevent it, to control it, gawin natin. Yeah, and it's really a way of life right now. So, we need yeah. to really have that ano, education attitude and perspective to really adopt and get um to really um take into consideration all of these things that you have mentioned a while ago so we can proceed to the next and the other part of the yeah. presentation um yes there would be ppes but um we need to also reiterate and review once again the proper way be it donning or doffing because it wouldn't be effective it if it wouldn't be done and doffed properly then. So, everything would be to no avail if it wouldn't be performed correctly. So, um, maybe you could orient again our viewers as to the proper procedures for the donning okay. and doffing. <laughs> okay. I add. So, um, since I am, work- I am working in the hospital, yeah, we have a set of PPEs that are required for us. So again, not necessarily these PPEs are worn everywhere in the hospital. There are designated areas in the hospital. That's why, again, important na you assess the physical setup of your clinic. Kung ano lang yung, kung ano lang yung kailangan na PPE na isusuot ng worker doon, and etc. So for the personal protective equipment, yan, I, uh, I have enlisted seven because these are These are the ones commonly used. So the shoe cover, gloves, coveralls, gowns or aprons, mask, goggles, surgical cap, and face shield. So yung pagkakalista ko dyan would be the pagkakasunod-sunod when you do donning. So later, I will also be showing kung ano yung pagkakasunod-sunod sa doffing. Okay. Ayan. To start, Factors influencing PPE selection. Ano ba dapat yung isuot kong PPE? Or ano ba? May levels, levels ba siya? Well, if you're going to research um, several guidelines, yan, wala namang magkakaparehas sa guidelines or magkak- wala naman nag-standardize sa ito yung dapat yung PPE na isusuot mo. Basically, all were just guidelines. Kasi probably in that particular organization, in that area, iba yung environment or iba yung na-assess nila. That's why they came up with that kind of PPEs and etc. So according to CDC, uh, factors influencing PPE selection would be the type of exposure and then the duration also mentioned. Type of exposure meaning, ano ba, would you be, perf- would you be performing a highly aerosolizing procedure? What do I mean by aerosolizing procedure would be um, yung pasyente uh, yung pasyente mo ba kumbaga tutubuhan mo siya or would you be getting um would you be getting uh, blood samples yon so 
yun, important na malama din na type of exposure. And also, sa clinics, ano ba, maganda rin malaman. Ito nga sa uh, kumbaga it was also mentioned before by a colleague na maganda rin sana kung alamin nyo yung, yung, yung type of patients or clients that you get to see. Whether are these patients, sila ba yung tipong um, aware when yung sinabi mo, oh, cover your mouth or cough on your sleeves, can they follow instructions? Yan, kasi kung yun yung mag- ang majority ng clients mo cannot yet comprehend or cannot kumbaga, um, cannot yet understand at that moment, particularly yung mga simple instructions, then probably consider those scenarios on what type of PPE you should wear. Yan. And then duration, usually, um, the duration kasi depended, uh, depends on the uh, the material itself. So, yung, uh, yung waterproof uh, ability nung material, yan, nagdadepend talaga siya. Kasi yun nga, if you would talk about yung exposure or yung procedure sa gagawin, di ba? Kung eight hours ka sa loob nung, in the hospital, if eight hours ka dun sa loob nung ward na lahat yun panay COVID patients, then you should wear a much uh, higher level PPE. Kasi prone ka. Pero kung less than, sabi natin, less than four hours ka lang sa isang ward, na wala naman masyado interaction or kung meron man, very brief, then you could probably wear um, something na lower level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pero, a good assessment of your area risks must be done to determine the appropriate PPE to wear, appropriate PPE level. Okay. Ta- tanya ako question. Siguro maglagay tayo ng dalawang scenario. Okay. One is an occupational therapist working in uh, an adult long-term care facility na yung OT hindi siya stay in, no? nagagaling okay. sa labas, goes to that facility once in a while. So, hindi natin alam kung may COVID or wala. Let's say, hindi naman identified na may may COVID patients talaga, pero catering to long-term care. And another therapist naman who does um, consult- uh, consultancy in a, a private clinic, for example, for the kids. Tapos yung kids, outpatient ang basis. They go in. So, anong mare-recommend nating level ba yan of PPE? Kung ganito yung situations. Okay. Sige. Thank you for the question, sir. I thank you for the question, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Lee lang, <laughs> ha? <laughs> thank you for the question, Lee. Actually, that's a good question. Pero, well, if I'm going to be to assess, maganda sana kung malaman ko kung yung physical setup Diba? Kung ano yung policies nung clinic, diba? nung yeah. both clinic. Kasi it's really hard to recommend. To recommend kung ano ba yung mga dapat na PPE if ever na dapat mong gamitin. Kasi kulang yung information eh. Parang you can say na just, be- uh, you can say na just because um, ito yung clinic na to, uh, they have to wear this type of level. Diba? I- hindi, hindi talaga ma-identify strictly kung ano yun. Kasi maganda talaga na merong comprehensive or dapat um, talagang pinag-aralan or kailangan personally makita ko kung ano yung ano yung nangyayari dun sa clinic na yun. Kung ano yung itsura niya. Yun. Kung ano ba? Ito bang mga uh, patient na nasa facility na swab na ba sila? Yung mga ganong factors if ever to consider. Yan. Can't really, uh, can't really say kung ano yung Uh-oh. mga pwede mo recommend if ever. Okay, okay. Okay, so... Uh, okay. So, first, before you... um, So, the first thing that you should do if if you are a worker, or sabihin natin is yung context would be uh, you're a therapist going to your clinic, uh, ideally, you have to change home clothes to work clothes. So, ngayong um, new normal, sabi, advice talaga, na you try to tote. Kumbaga, if you can wear simple shirt and simple pants, uh, if you can try to use a bag na madaling labhan, then then by so do it. Kasi again, remember, whatever you bring outside can potentially be exposed to the virus. Yan. Kasi di mo alam, mamaya yung katabi mo, inubuhan, na ubu, umubo pala siya, tapos hindi mo nakita yung aerosolized um, matter Kumbaga, it came contact with you. So, 
again, sana mag- maging practice siya na simplehan na lang. Kung baga, simpleng damit, simpleng ganun. Yun. Tapos, in the hospital, we do is to, we wear scrubs. Yan. We change uh, from work from home clothes to work clothes, which is the scrub. So in the clinic, this can be adapted as well. Pero again, no need naman to buy scrubs. As long as you have something to change, that would do. Okay. Okay. The first part of the PPE, the first thing that's been worn would be the shoe cover. Actually, the shoe co- cover... Um, Ano siya, ginagamit siya if there are no available shoes to change to going inside the facility. Pero again, I advise uh, clinic owners or the clinicians to have uh, kumbaga, separate na yung shoes sila from going home to work. Parang mag-change talaga sila before going inside the work area. And then also, uh, observe proper wearing and disposal. When you wear a shoe cover, um, yun nga, yung sa donning, if you can see the if you could see the arrows in the picture, if yung plaging mauuna yung sa, pag mag-isusuot siya, yung mauuna yung sa cover yung, fi, yung toes, that's going to the back. Tapos pagtatanggalin siya from the back towards the front. Yan. So, why do we wear the shoe cover first? Because we have to start with the most contaminated part, of course. Kasi paa yung naglalakad. I mean, pinalalakad mo siya. Always, almost always in contact with um, the ground. Pero, uh, shoe covers are not suitable for outdoor use because there's a high chance of being a waste. Big sabihin, imagine mo, nagbabiyahe ka, uh, you're riding the bus, you're riding the jeep, tas suot mo yung shoe cover. It, Kumbaga, instead of doing good, it would do more harm and waste. So, may chance na matanggal siya, maiwan siya. So, this should be strictly worn inside the facility. Yan. In the case of clinics naman, who doesn't, who, who we are usually accustomed to wearing socks, okay lang naman yung socks as long as you will be changing it afterwards. Yan. If you have slippers, that would do. Okay lang naman siya. This is, again, shoe covers are only worn if there are no available shoes to change going inside the facility. And also another tip, during this uh, pandemic or this new normal, try to avoid uh, shoes na lang then wearing. Yung may mga tali, yan. preferably sana yung mga sapatos na madaling malabhan, madaling madisinfect. Yan. Kasi again, you know, the virus is high. Uh, kumbaga, yun nga, yung sabi ko, pag may umubo lang sa tabi mo, hindi atin alam kung pwede palang, alam mo yung mga aerosol producing uh, particles, andun siya sa gamit natin. So, after the shoe cover, it's a must. Whenever you touch your shoes, always try to hand rub. So, hand rub using alcohol or soap and water and preferably for 20 seconds. So, proper hand washing. Okay? So, by what I mean by proper hand washing, um, kahit alcohol yan, kailangan pa rin observe yung paano pagtamang paghugas. Okay? Not only with soap and water. So for the next part, oh my God, I don't know what Ayan, ito na, si gloves. Okay, so gloves, basically, ginagamit siya um, it, if ever you see patients. So the gloves are usually worn um, depending on the procedure. Pero maganda na rin na sinusuot siya um, kasi sometimes... Well, if you if you're going to uh, to be in a hospital, di ba? Makikita mo yung doctors or yung nurses, they use gloves whenever they touch a patient para din kubaga clean and sterile. However, ayan. Okay. So, please observe proper removal of gloves. So, I have here a glove. I have here a pair of gloves. Ayan, sinusuot siya. Okay. So, susuot ko siya, proper, <laughs> proper removal. So, pag sinuot natin siya, yan. so, the usual, you wear it, you're wearing gloves. Latex gloves, non-latex, ganun. Yeah. Ito, um, remember na pag nagsuot ka ng glove and you try to touch thing, considered contaminated na siya. Try to touch patient, yan. Tapos, Laging tatandaan na there's a proper technique on how you should doff gloves. So, when you doff gloves, make sure, so sa picture, 
Yan. You pinch uh, your left hand or any hand na pwede. You pinch the wrist part on the glove. So, kinakita nyo. Wrist part on the glove. Tapos, inside to outside. So, yeah. Okay? Then, next would be the clean hand or yung sa pinagtanggalan, ano, uh, susungkit nyo siya dun sa ilalim ng glove. Okay? Never, never hold this glove. Kasi considered clean hand na to eh. Clean hand na siya. So, pag hinawakan mo to, dirty part na to ng glove. So, wala din. Bakit? Uh, wala din. So, hindi na siya clean hand if ever. So, you have, susungkitin mo lang siya. Tapos, again, inside, outside principle. Yeah. So, isang buong glove, uh, yung dalawa, magkasama na siya sa loob. Tapos, tapon agad. Okay. Next, um, an outer glove is optional. So, what was indicated in the guidelines, uh, may outer glove na inindicate doon. Optional siya, pero that outer glove must be changed per patient. Okay? So, hindi siya dapat maglinger. For example, so si patient 1 hinawakan, tapos si patient 2, patient 3, patient 4, same yung glove. Dapat hindi. So, at uh, as advised or as, um, kumbaga, as recommended, ideally per patient, magkakaiba yung glove niya. Pero, take note. Yan, maraming, marami akong nakikita sa, marami akong nakikita sa, sa grocery, sa labas. You don't wear gloves outside the facility. You only wear gloves inside uh, facility. Okay? Kasi, instead of bring, if instead of doing good, you're bringing more harm. Kasi lahat hinawakan mo, tapos lahat hinawakan mo, um, kahit naka-glove cup, pwedeng matransmit mo kung ano man yung mga nahawakan mo to other people na prone na mahawakan siya. Yun. Tsaka, um, wearing gloves, maano siya eh, kumbaga mas, mas magiging complacent ka, mas hindi ka mag, masyadong magiging, uh, hindi, makakalimutan mo yung thought na kailangan mo maghugas from time to time. So, yun. Again, don't wear gloves outside the workplace. Just wear gloves inside the work area. Okay? Yan. So, next, yun. every time you doff, also, every time you doff, pag natatanggal ka ng PPE, make sure to wash hands as well. So, washing hands, 20 seconds, either hand rub or alcohol, rather, or uh, so, uh, soap and water. Next would be the gowns and aprons or coverall. So, when you wear a coverall, uh, always inspect prior to wearing. Kasi pag butas yung coverall, uh, may sira, may punit, mawawala yung purpose niya na to protect you if ever. Tapos do not be in a hurry to removing your uh, to remove your coverall and also to wear. Kasi number one, para maiwasan din yung pagkapunit. Number two, maiwasan din yung um, kasi sabihin natin ginamit mo na siya throughout the day. Pag tinanggal mo siya nagmadali ka, yung aerosolized particles probably na naka, kumbaga, nakadikit doon sa over, cover all gown mo, magliliparan sila. Yun. Although di atin nakikita, pero again, huwag nalang magmadali. So again, same as with the gloves, inside-outside principle. So, well, based on the picture, I don't have a cover all or apron with me or a gown. Yan. So inside-outside procedure. Okay? So next, yeah, necessary when necessary tapes are placed to secure skin exposure tapes with tabs. Sometimes may mga coveralls na um bitin, bitin din sa worker. For example, masyadong mahaba or masyadong maikli. So gumagamit tayo ng tab tape. Whenever you would be using a tape or if you ever you would be taping um taping the coverall or the gown sa inyo, make sure na meron siyang tab or may nakatiklop lang sa dulo para madali matanggal. And at the same time, maiwasan mapunit. Kasi pag kinutkot, pag walang tab, tendency na pupunit din yung coverall. Okay, ayan. Face protection. So currently, we have uh, what we know would be the mask and the respirator. So, and whenever you do sa respirator, introduce ko lang yung fit testing. So we have the qualitative fit testing and the user seal check. So na-experience na, na-experience ko yung sa ano, qualitative, yan, yung magsusuot ng something to fit test the respirator. Again, um, kung tatanungin ako kung ano ba dapat yung isusuot na mask o ano ba may respirator, okay. So, according to WHO, yan, in-include ko siya, well, a fabric mask can already be worn by 
by anyone simply to protect others around you, to protect yourself from the spread of COVID-19. So, yun. in the clinics, actually, you have you can wear na you have to wear talaga a, a mask or particular surgical mask for the respirators not necessarily needed needed because uh, again N95 should be reserved or the filter of uh, mask protectors must be reserved to healthcare workers catering directly to covid positive patients yan so ang tendency kasi actually baka i mean maghoard kasi well technically in terms of uh, its effectivity with the virus, talagang one of the most effective would be the respirators. Pero again, kung hindi naman um, identified as COVID-positive patient yung uh, tinitreat natin, yun, a surgical mask would do. Okay? So, if ever you wear, um, if ever you wear an N95, if ever you're catering, if you're working in a hospital, make sure you also do a user seal check. So, nakalagay siya sa guidelines on how to do that. Make sure the nose piece is properly placed. Ayan, nakapisil siya. Tapos, you try to breathe in, breathe out kung may lumalabas sa hangin. So, yeah, according to WHO. Ayan. Pero, ayun. Ayan. Donning and doffing of respirators. If you are a health worker working in the hospital, um, when you don, you have to stretch the garters as needed para ano lang, lumuwag ng konti. Tapos you cup on the face, then upper band, and then the lower band. Then do fit, check, fit testing, yung sinabi ko. So, check the fit sa ilong, kung ano yung lumalabas sa hangin, yan. Tapos, doffing of respirators. Again, eto, pag nagtatanggal ng mask, make sure na hindi nyo hinahawakan yung front part. Okay? Kasi con- anything that's in front is already considered contaminated. So, pag sinuot nyo siya in a whole day session, pag hinawakan mo to wala din. So, nahawakan mo yung dirty part. So, dapat lagi sa tenga lang yung tanggal. In the, in the case of respirator, sure, N95, dapat ilalim lang. So, band ka lang talaga hahawak all throughout. So, you don't touch the front part. Okay? So, donning and doffing mask. Ayan. So, same uh, except that uh, surgical mask, you have to put on each side of the ear, pinch nose to fit. Make sure that the nose and chin is adequately covered. That means, kasi may mga nagsusuot, talagang naka, ano lang siya, naka flat lang. So, dapat covered siya. So, makikita niya naman sa illustration yung appropriate. Ayan. That's a doffing of mask. Surgical mask, again, do not touch the mouth or front part. Just remove one guard at a time on each ear. Tapos, huwag magmamadali. Okay. So next after the mask would be the face protection. So face protection uh, includes the goggles and the face shields. So goggles, ideally, uh, you don't wear your personal prescription lenses. Ayan. And contact lenses are not a substitute. So contact lenses, uh, try to avoid wearing it na lang. Kasi again, pag sinuot nyo siya, kahawakan nyo siya eh. Diba? So mataas yung risk of infection if ever. Tapos, Prescription lenses, not necessarily. Try to avoid. Meron naman tayong mga goggles na available na pwedeng i-cover yung salamin kung kinakailangan talaga. Yan, face shields. Actually, goggles and face shields. Goggles or face shields. Pero depending ulit sa procedure. If your procedure is highly aerosolized producing, uh, you have to wear both. Pero pag hindi naman, either or lang siya. Okay? Yan, can be an option depending on procedure as I've mentioned. And it should properly cover forehead as below the sheen of the face. Okay? Yan. Tapos, next, surgical cap. So, surgical cap is an optional also. Lalo if you're just going to do a level 2. So, a level 2 basically is a goggle, a goggle mask, tapos, and or face shield. Pwede rin mga face shield or mask. Yan. Sometimes, again, depende talaga siya sa procedure. Sometimes, people might wear a surgical cap and also a glove and a shoe cover, depending on the situation. So, yeah, there you have it. So, sa donning, um, as I've mentioned, ito yung pagkakasirod sa shoe cover, gloves, coveralls, gowns, mask, then goggles, then surgical cap, then face shield. And then next for the doffing, Ang unang tinatanggal would be the shoe cover. Again, you start with the most contaminated or uh, mad- madume. So, may asterisk siya afterwards kasi you have to observe hand washing or rub 
for 20 seconds at least. So shoe cover. Then next would be the gloves. Then the face shield. Then the coveralls, the surgical cap, and the gog goggles and the masks. So mask yung last, if ever. Okay. Yeah. So, so after donning and doffing, uh, after doffing your PPE, it is advisable that you do disinfection. So what I mean by disinfection, uh, at least kubaga, you do cleaning of the items that you've used, disinfection, and alcohol. So basically, question, pwede bang magdala ng cellphone, yung mga ganon? Actually, kung sa work area, try to minimize yung mga belongings. Kaya nga, di ba, in jewelries, not necessarily may suot ka pa. Kasi the more na marami kang suot na jewelries or necklaces, you have to disinfect that. Every time, every time you see a patient, every time you, you doff your PPE, you have to. Then also, make it a practice na every time you doff the PPE, every time tapos na yung trabaho nyo sa center or whenever you go home, you always take a bath immediately upon doffing or before going home or arriving home. Kaya ideally, sa doffing area, if you have it in a facility, medyo malapit siya sa CR para diretso ligo si worker. Para pag uwi, yun. Okay. So, all of these uh, disinfection protocol are also part of the guidelines in the PAOT. So, it was indicated as well. Okay, so, one-fourth cup of bleach uh, what, per one gallon of clean water. Then, if you're going to prepare this bleach solution, use plastic spray bottles and a cloth. Okay, so, key points about PPE. Uh, well, observe proper donning and doffing. It's very important to observe this number one key point. Kasi nakasalalay dyan kung, ano, kung tama ba yung ginawa mo. Tsaka para sa, sa safety mo na din as a worker, uh, as a healthcare worker. Then next, proper waste management must be observed at all times. So if you can um, segregate or if you can kubaga, use appropriate plastic colored bags, for the doff PPE, please do so. Then also perform proper hand hygiene. Proper hand hygiene is a must. And if you can observe it at least every 30 minutes, whenever you do patient procedure or whenever you see a patient for treatment. And lastly, PPE may provide a false sense of security. No matter how you wear the most complete PPE, as in sobrang ka level 4 ka na, pero if you don't measure, if you don't observe uh, proper hand washing, proper donning and doffing, wala din siya. Kumbaga, sayang yung effort mo. So, very holistic yung approach when it comes to safety. And then lastly, PPE does not eliminate. Rather, it minimizes the risk. So, just because naka-PPE ka, hindi ka na magkaka-virus. Pero wag naman sana. Pero it just minimizes the risk. Diba? Kung makikita nyo yung mga illustrations when it comes to researches, yung mga nakamask, meron pa rin konti na lalabas if ever, pero at least minimize yung risk yung know, worker. So again, this is the new normal. So try to avoid um, na lang yung mga crowded places. Um, always cover your mouth. Cover your mouth, not I mean using your hands, but it's either using a cloth or a tissue or cough on your, sne uh, your sleeves, tapos wash hands, and observe physical distancing. So that's it. Ayan, tapos na siya. A very brief um, discussion regarding sa hair control and PPE. Yeah. So thank you. And that would be my resources. Everything came from CDC, WHO, and OSHA. And these are nice, uh, good references if you wish to look further Yan. Maganda yung mga write-up nila about PPE and what you can do in an inpatient or outpatient facility. Okay, thank you very much, Tanya. Actually, uh, when I was looking at yung mga different donning and doffing protocols, I realized na kasi we're almost four months into the lockdown, eh, di ba? And uh, during the start, I think people are really very conscious about disinfecting you know, parang uh, when, the, when well, galing sa labas, pag uwi, ligo talaga, hugas yeah. ang kamay. Pero habang tumatagal yung panahon, medyo nagiging lax na din ang konti. Oh. Pero actually, it should be the other way around kasi mas dumadami ang infections in the community. Right? So, it's it's really good that you um, gave us like a review 
you know, of this for everyone. Uh, I think one one important thing that you were stressing out uh, during this otalaken is that uh, hindi basta magpi PPE, you no? Know? Uh, hindi basta like full gear. You don't necessarily need to be in full gear, especially for people in the clinics. It will really depend on the situation, the kinds of clients that they see, the setup, for example, no. Kung at that will determine what type of protective equipment they can use. So, yes. hindi pala necessarily kailangan naka overall ano yan, PPE yeah, with a shield. Depende po talaga siya, sir. Pero in, depende talaga siya sa situation tsaka dun uh-huh. sa setup ng clinic if ever. Uh-huh. Okay. So, kung meron kang ano, kung meron kang parang final takeaway, ayan, kung meron sa <laughs> isang dapat tandaan sa ating otala ka ngayon, ngayon, what would that be? Siguro, ano po, uh, would be, again, there's more to just than wearing a PPE. And so, I discussed the hierarchy of control. So if you if you can review, if you have a time to review, uh, try to look into the hierarchy of control and try to assess your current setup in the clinic. Yan. Tapos, yun, always observe yun nga, hand washing and everything that is required of us in this new normal. Hand washing, always wear your face mask, always um, observe physical distancing, and stay healthy. Okay, Tanya, we have one question here from our uh-huh. viewer. So let me read it. What risk assessment tool do you recommend for us to use so we can determine what PPE would be applicable to our setting? Uh, for the risk assessment tool, okay. So, for the risk assessment tool kasi, ano siya, um, it's readily available in the internet. They can try to research on that. Ayan. Pero kasi yung mga so far na available na nakikita ko would be for the industrial setting. So, uh, I haven't yet, I haven't checked uh, personally kung ano yung mga pwedeng applicable. Pero it's available in the internet. Ayan. Especially under sa CDC and sa OSHA if they would like to check on further that. Okay, so I think that would be a good resource too for our clinic yes. owners and managers so that they could really plan out how to go about the environmental um, or engineering control, the administrative control based on the risk in their facility or in their institution. So it was a very insightful presentation, um, Tanya. So... Let me just synthesize um, things that we have learned. So PPE wouldn't suffice. So it would be the lowest, lowest level in the hierarchy that you have presented. It should be backed up by certain engineering and administrative control in order for all of these procedures to be effective. And it would really be important to contextualize your setting because there wouldn't be a single template as to what to do per facility or per center. But PAOT um, stick with the level 2 um, PPE, and that would be the minimum requirement regardless of the practice setting. Then it would just be the clinical judgment of the practitioner, of the clinic owner, if he or she would go up to the level of PPE depending on the procedure there. So... Thank you, Tanya. Lee? Thank you so much, Tanya, uh, for Thank joining you. us tonight. No? Okay, so um, as always, no, uh, we thank our uh, audience for joining us tonight. Um, this stays in YouTube, in our YouTube channel, and it's still accessible to the public. Okay, so if you're watching this, please like the video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our next Otalakayan would be, so that would be episode 2, that will be on July 18, this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock in the evening. We will have Professor Caroline Fischel from Sweden, who will be discussing about tailoring technology-mediated occupations for all, older adults. So it's still live in our YouTube channel, um, free for everyone and accessible to the public. 
Yeah. So uh, again, uh, Tanya, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Marami kami thank natutunan sa iyo. And I hope uh, mag-iingat kayo, lalo na ang PGH ay isang uh, COVID treatment facility. So regard sa, sa OT department doon. Uh, Kim, thank you for joining us tonight. And kita-kita <laughs> tayong lahat so, sa next episode. Sa so, next episode ng OTA Lakayan. That's all. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Thank all. you. Good night. Good night.